somebody said, would I do transition pictures for actor Errol Flynn, who died in 1959 at the age of 50? I'd not really considered doing Errol Flynn. His name, honestly, has never come up in all the suggestions for the past two years for transition pictures. So I thought, ah, I'll leave him. I won't do him right now. But I get so confused between these various actors, between him and Clark Gable and others, that I thought, I'll just go and look at his picture and see which one he is. And as soon as I did, all these pictures came for his transition, and I thought, maybe I'm meant to do this right now. He made a ton of movies in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, including Captain Blood and The Adventures of Robin Hood, and They Died With Their Boots On. All very, very successful, I think. I only saw one, which is The Master of Ballantrae. Otherwise, I know nothing about Errol Flynn. Turns out he was a friend of L. Ron Hubbard, the Scientology guy, but also an incredible womanizer, a very very, very heavy drinker, but that lifestyle eventually killed him. He died, as I said, at the age of 50 of cirrhosis of the liver and heart problems and fatty liver and just a whole bunch of stuff. Plus he had back problems and arthritis. He really was a mess by the time he died. So without really intending to, I went into the energy for Errol Flynn's photo. That's his picture. And there he is. And immediately he was being dragged along the ground on a rope, face down though. And usually in the pictures when people are dragged by a rope, they are at the mercy of forces outside of themselves. This may be... His illness. This may be the fact that he took a very long time to die as his body, on the inside anyway, deteriorated steadily over the months and years. This rope pulled him along the ground, then it pulled him down a gangplank of a ship onto the ship where the winch was that was hauling him in. So there was a certain inevitability about his end brought on by himself, of course, by his own uh, vices and so on. Then there was a little corridor. He goes down that. He comes to a little... This is very, very long-winded, but it obviously contributes to the idea that he died over a period of time. He goes down this little corridor. Then he comes to a room with an elevator in it, but there's actually no elevator there. There's just a shaft. And he fell down the shaft. Fell and fell and fell and landed in that symbolic cave I always see, but in a rough state. His legs would barely support him. As I watched, he struggled to move around and felt really, really disempowered. In fact, he was cursing his own stupidity while he'd been alive. Damn! Shaking his fist. Damn! He slumped down against the metaphorical wall rather than go up the tunnel. You can't stop the process. The tunnel is there. The momentum has to be maintained. It's like a magnet pulling you in. But he didn't have the strength. So he started crawling up this tunnel, metaphorically, on his hands and knees, scraping the flesh tearing at the flesh. It was so painful. And he got to a certain point where he was practically out of energy. But before he could reach the light that I always see, there was a step up that he was barely capable of climbing. And he goes, no, I can't do this anymore. But it's almost as if the universe, grace, said to him, no, stand up. You will do this on your own. Show some real muscle for once. Now, I don't know about Errol Flynn's life, but it strikes me that anybody who abused their body that much was probably incredibly insecure on the inside. He was good looking on the outside, but on the inside, he was very, very, very weak. 
and he didn't realize his true power. He thought his power came from performance, um, being around powerful people, making money, having a yacht, or whatever it was. And in fact, his true power was inside of himself. And the universe, because it knows these things, said, come on, you will do this on your own. So despite being weak, he eventually clambers to his feet and makes it to the chamber at the end where this symbolic light is that I always see that leads to ascension. And he had realized by that point, by having scraped away the ego protections for his insecurities, that he did have a certain amount of power that he didn't believe he had uh, when he was in form. The power he had in the mortal world was all about fame and money and success. None of which matters when you are formless and in spirit and transitioning. And now he realized his own strength. And once he realized what a powerful being he had been all along, that gave him the strength to stand and go into the light. And he just stepped into it somehow. It's like, uh, okay, I guess I'm done. Like, I wish I could, with this new knowledge, go back and relive that. I would do it all differently, but I know I got to go forward. And he stepped into the light and he was gone. We don't have to make that same mistake, it strikes me. If we can only acknowledge the sheer power we have inside of us by being linked to the divine, by this spiritual umbilical cord that we have that meets us on the inside, if we can only connect with that and align with that divinity, we can be powerful now. We don't have to learn that lesson later. And we don't need to strive for what the world regards as success. Money, possessions, fame, power, whatever. We don't need to do that because we have everything we need on the inside and we can relax and surrender and live as uh, complete human beings, as whole human beings, spiritual beings, uh, without going through what Errol Flynn went through. Fascinating, really.